I mean, if you've got a ticket, you, you've got to get here. The Red Devils Parachute Brigade. It should be pointed out, Des, I think there's a sort of festival atmosphere about the game today. I mean, that's the good thing about it. There doesn't seem to be any kind of animosity from one set of fans to the other. It's just a, a group of people come to enjoy a game of football on a great occasion. Sure, that seems to happen more when you get a club that hasn't been here before. Yes. It's new for them. It's, it is a joyous occasion, the very fact that they've got to win there. Yes. It's such a contrast, really, in the, when we saw the two teams lined up yes. there. The Man United side, which looks worth 11 million. I mean, he had to pay that for them, but there are so many individual players there. But they've played like individuals all season. Now, this may well be their stage, and we know that certain of them have tremendous experience of an atmosphere like this. Against that, there is this team spirit and collective spirit which uh, Crystal Palace showed in the semi-finals against Liverpool, and which Coventry showed against Spurs two or three years ago, and which Wimbledon showed against Liverpool. So I really believe it's that tight, but uh, like both of you, I, I think United are going to win it. There are going to be three red faces here at the end <laughs> there if it goes the other way. <laughs> There's their manager Alex Ferguson describing this as the biggest day of his life and Steve Koppel at 34 the youngest ever manager of an FA Cup final team and what a moment it is for these Palace lads and their fans the first time the club has been in the FA Cup final and they're bound to get an appropriate reception Crystal Palace very much the underdogs but as we've been saying since we came on the air this is all on the day and who knows what to expect one or two United players a bit late out there but now they're into the fresh air of Wembley and just listen to this Crystal Palace, who's played in all the divisions of the Football League. This is their finest hour, really, in the public eye. Only 14,000 of their supporters actually got tickets. But both of these clubs have quite a following in other countries as well. And a nice moment as Steve Coppola, a former Manchester United Cup finalist on three occasions, talks to his opposite number. They're great friends away from the tension of this occasion the two managers and as they stride across this quite perfect surface the team's already entering into the mood of the day it's buoyant it's optimistic it's good-natured and we all hope it stays that way look at the balloons I think you may have caught a shot in the Royal Box earlier of Yao Havelange the top man of FIFA 
he's here not just in that capacity but uh, Steve Koppel takes up his position as the Duke walks out flank there on the right of the picture by Bert Millerchip the chairman of the FA and Ernest Brown on the left the Challenge Cup committee and Graham Kelly who's had a very busy week just joining them played due respect I'm pleased to say this year and Jeff Thomas who actually is a Manchester boy by birth captain of Crystal Palace will now present his players to the Duke Nigel Martin the goalkeeper was the first one in and Andy Thorne who played here two years ago knows about uh, the ceremonials here David Madden got the second uh, substitutes position by the way Alan Pardew the uh, light haired player got the winner in the semi-final Phil Barber next to him is a wide player and then we have Mark Bright and Ian Wright, who in the end was a substitute. Andy Gray, we'll watch for him on the free kicks and corners. Richard Shaw, the left back with the dreadlocks. John Salako from Nigeria. And Johnny Pemberton. And David Madden next to Steve Koppel. Every year we're talking now in terms of 700 million, would you believe, who see these pictures either live or recorded. And to anybody watching in other parts of the world, we say welcome again to the FA Cup final. We hope you'll enjoy it with us because we're now going to give you a final check on the two team lineups. And the newcomers, Crystal Palace, have selected the side that played Liverpool in the semi final. Now, despite the morning speculation, I have a feeling that it was always doubtful that Ian Wright would start the game. He is a substitute. And Steve Koppel's main decision, really, this morning was who should be the second sub. As I said in the introductions, David Madden got the vote, and there were a few tears at the hotel this morning from one or two of those who didn't make it. The unlucky players, Eddie McGoldrick, Rudy Hedman, Jeff Hopkins. As for Manchester United, well, Alex Ferguson had one or two thoughts, but the semi-final replay team against Oldham won his nod of approval. Well, in the centre circle, the two captains present uh, a nice little opposite here because Brian Robson on the right is bidding to become the first captain to receive the FA Cup three times at Wembley and Jeff Thomas on the left started life as a part-time player with Rochdale when he was working as, a, as an electrician he supported Manchester City and he used to catch the team coach in his overalls in those days what a change for him here today as captain of an FA Cup final team 